Al Columbia returns with a self-published effort, Amnesia Number no. 2. All the beautiful art you guys have come to love from Al Columbia, all new. Welcome to your favorite YouTube channel, Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. We have more than 1,700 videos at your disposal. Uh, we might have talked about your favorite comics. Hit the magnifying glass on the front page of the Kayfabe YouTube channel. Search for your favorite titles and check out those episodes. We're on, en route to hitting 100,000 subscribers sooner than later. Make that happen and you will get the videos uh, delivered to you faster than you would otherwise, which is important for something like this new Al Columbia set of works that, that uh, we're going to be looking at because it's not like there's an infinite amount of these out in the wild. Uh, so subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, hit whatever buttons are required for you to get delivered those videos. Uh, if you want to leg up on that and to get these videos even earlier than uh, Gen Pop, what you got to do is become a patron on our, our Patreon. If you're at the King Kayfabe level of our Patreon, you're getting all the videos before anybody else, and uh, you are hanging out with us in a live stream recording chat room, or at least you have access to the chat room uh, within the Patreon to uh, to see what we're, we're covering uh, for you know the, the following week. And without further ado, Jimmy, let's take a look at uh, Amnesia 2, the last films of Francis D. Goodfellow by uh, Al Columbia. What a bizarre project Absolutely. to have two two issues of this. Yeah, it's a strange, oversized, and as we get into it, you'll see the oddity of this if you're unfamiliar with it. Yes, we did have a we did a video on the first one. Uh, who knows where Al Columbia got these this guy's damn photos? There's like a little smudge on there. I think it might it might be it might be photoshopped in there. Uh, but the guy looks like a damn Al Columbia character. He sure does. Yes, he does. <laughs> From like the biologic show era, Al Columbia. And what we're looking at is like kayfabe like movie posters of these fever dream psychedelic F Fleischer Brothers cartoons on acid. Yeah, well said. And, you know, I think that this has been Al Columbia's interest for a long time. Yeah. Um, you know, certainly going back into the 90s, some of his Zero Zero work had qualities like this and some of his Blab work. And so, you know, if you're searching through our archives, we do have other Al Columbia videos available to give you some background if you're seeing this for the first time and thinking, what the hell is this? Because that is Al Columbia's, in my mind, his calling card. Right. Nobody else's comics or, or illustrations look like Al Columbia work. Yeah, Pitch Perfect maker of things and uh he's able to create that fantastic illusion that really looks like a piece of still celluloid and it's it's there's subtle things you know like it's a lower fidelity so so like kind of like the smeary lines are important sometimes there will be like the little shadow that looks like a damn cell sitting on top of a of a background yeah he pulls in so much of that bizarre detail that I think most people never think about, let alone think about how do you actually create that. Yeah. And his work is filled with that kind of ephemera. I, I don't even know exactly how to describe it because it is like artifacts of other media. Right. Go to hotmoonpress.com. This is where you're going to be able to get it because this is a, this is a sm small venture. You know, this isn't, uh, I don't know that this is going to be in the Diamond Previews book, but hey, maybe it is. Yeah, I would definitely give a comic book store extra credit if you walk in and this is on the shelf. I've I've been in that position, Jimmy. I, I had to uh, to choose the the best retailer of the year, twenty fifteen, and and uh, when I was scouring their shelves and stuff, if if you didn't at least have Copra, then you were out of the runnings, man, because that was like the barest minimum outside of the direct market that one could go and still have superheroes. And it's like if you don't take that leap. This makes me think this is something that Al Columbia has witnessed. I think he it looks he legit. Maybe grew up or lived in New England in like those old, you know, old houses of, of New England, and it feels like that's where you get the detail of like I forget what this is called that would go under like plasterboard, you know, like the the lathe, whatever that is. Yeah. Uh, but even like the brick being uneven in an old fireplace, like all these details just feel too good to be made up. Right. And the stuff that you would see in like the Fleischer brothers is you would see like some fidelity of line on some bricks, but not all. And you would do the rest in color. So, so he does that. Uh, I think you would get this too, like the highlight line on a black, you know, like if you look at the leg or the arm on this, on this couch, that's something that would always kind of stand out to me. And you would see this translated into marker art where people would put like the white 
highlight on something, and it really does create that that surface, that glossy or wet feeling for a surface. Buy our books. Keep the videos coming to you on a regular basis. Jimmy has Street Angel Deadliest Girl Alive, Street Angel Princess of Poverty, True Crime Funnies, 1986 Zine, BW Zine. Get those at his website. Hulk Grand Design, Treasury is out there. Trade paperback coming soon. I have Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus. X-Men Grand Design Trilogy, Red Room Crypto Killers comes out the end of February. Anti-Social Network, Red Room Trigger Warnings, and the Switchblade Shorties comic strip coming to you online on a daily basis. Now that we're done uh, showing off our books, get them, and back to the video. Got this, like, just super solid characters that are built with... It's all shapes, and <laughs> create that dissonance with the demon faces. The proportions of that, like, Coco Clown kind of character. Always in that like peril you know like this poor character is never gonna have a have a good day right it's very dreamlike and surreal as well i can see this one causing us some trouble on the channel in terms of just uh people actually being able to see it look <laughs> at the title even the church of the damned this is fun to see columbia leaning into some of these details too like the text treatments and things that surround the artwork right chance for him to show off some of that because clearly a, a very thoughtful artist. Also a good variety. You know, even just taking these two pages into account, you see we've seen a lot of these kind of single images, although you're almost creating panels with like doorways and, and pieces within right. the bigger composition, but then kind of a reference to a more traditional comic style layout. When he started playing with this style, he one of the things where he really fucking nailed it was creating that like filmic look where those old Fleischers clearly the light bulb yes. was right here and it just darkens out the further out you get so when you're looking at your television there would be these uh, like a dark abyss outside of the frame and and for a long time the Fleischer Bros stuff and it might still be uh, fell into public domain so you never hear anybody talk about it anymore, but it was talked about a lot when we were kids about like film restoration, like how old movies are like eroding and like mm -hmm. getting turning to dust and shit. And I think the Fleischer Bros fell fell victim to that. So like the fidelity of what we had to see on AMC or whatever as kids would look like this. It's like you're getting a little piece of an image inside of something that's like faded away. That stuff used to give me nightmares. Because it was, you know, it was probably like maybe the end of that being played would have been when I was a little kid. So once in a while, I'd see cartoons of theirs. Right. And they had those shadows around the edges, like you say. They just looked like a world that I didn't want to be in. Right. You know, Bad Dreams is, I think, a really good use of that kind of visual vernacular. Yeah, man. And uh, another thing that the Fleischers would do that was really fascinating was that... Uh, they would have um, they would have legitimate depth where they would sometimes build sets mm -hmm. that were in the intense foreground of where the camera is, like physical objects. So separating things with color this way can kind of create that illusion where there might be like these glass panes with certain still things. Like maybe this would be, you know, this this uh, stage would be like one piece of glass that's like two feet in front of hand models that are made of super sculpty here. And there would be just like layers and layers of that that they could twist and turn. It was a heck of an innovation. How much of a nightmare is this as a spread? Like reading the titles, looking at the images, thinking of them as juxtaposed next to each other. It's nightmare. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I think I think that I think that Al Columbia has some struggles internally and stuff like this, man. So he's, he's getting the poison out in the best way, you know, he he, he could think. Also worth noting that he's a savant. If you're watching this at home, you may look at this stuff and think this is done on an iPad or something. And I'm sure there's some digital touch-ups going on, yeah. but I bet a lot of this is on paper, which is something that has been around him as long as I've been looking at his work. I can remember people being like, hey, if you've never seen his originals, there's a lot more on the paper than there is in the digital after part. And I'd see some of his originals and can confirm that, where he's got charcoal and ink washes and all this stuff right on the page. So... I would imagine that there's some interesting artifacts behind this stuff. And see, dude, here's another good example, right? Where he could choose to go Chris Ware or Dan Clowes and have a 1200 DPI black line that's super sharp and precise, which is, which is you know, that's what they do for their stuff. But he's going for like 
a 200 DPI line or something. It's less than three because it has that fuzz at the edge. And then he's, I think that he could paint that. Like, mm-hmm. I don't think that that is just like a blur tool in the background piece. You know, I, I think he has a skill to paint that. And when you see like the little watercolor edge there, it look, I think this is all one piece. I don't think that there's, there's two layers. So he's even making that extra work for himself because it's not like cartoons are made that way on one piece of paper. You have your characters on one acetate layer painted the way they're painted. And then there's a background layer. So he's creating in, incredible challenges for himself that he's completely able to uh, rise to and create that illusion. It's fun whenever you see little bits like this mouth reminds me of certain Dave Cooper finishes. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of cool to see that and be reminded of like, this is a contemporary guy that, yeah. you know, 90s and up starts out as Bill Sienkiewicz's assistant on big numbers right. to kind of speak to what his ability is in terms of materials and, and able to really do a lot on the page. Yeah, I think that's showing here. Mm-hmm. You know, you could see you could see that that sort of I technique. See Dave Cooperisms, too, in this background, some of the, the softer palette there. And then the flip side, is this a photo? It's so photorealistic, that mountain background. Yeah, no, it has, it has technique on it. It has, it has definitely blood of hand inside. That is wild, because a lot's happening in that image. Yeah. And this one and many of them, for, for that matter. I'm wondering if he's using gouache with this stuff, because, like, whenever I would use gouache paint on, with certain pigments, like, little bits of pigment will kind of get caught up in the wash in a way that watercolors wouldn't. I also think it's fun to look at this and think about is it even a comic? Right. Because it has comic elements. It's a word balloon. Right. And it certainly works, I think, in, in sequence in terms of going through the pages together. But it does feel like it's also pushing that format. You know, it's almost picture book for adults. Right. Super iconic imagery. Every single page is a banger. Yes. Every page is I a banger. I think this second book, much better than the first one. Mm. I think he figured out some stuff, has a clear vision of what he's making here, and this... This feels spectacular. A little Ed Woodishness there, and once again, like an- another one of those movies that um, I think the, like the original prints got totally fu- fuzzed out were um, Nosferatu, uh, because of uh, that movie was made early enough that Bram Stoker was, still had the the rights, the Stoker family still had the rights to uh, to Dracula, and it had to get shelved. So for a hundred years, the fucking prints got all fucked up, and then it's it's so dark when you right. when you watch those flicks. So I think feel like maybe that's a little bit of an in, inspiration here. And listen, fish got to swim. Al Columbia's a cartoonist, man. So you got to get one comic page up in this motherfucker, where you can't uh, dispute it. And but look at this dude, still with the smarts, dude. Ain't no tangents with the with the little wood thing. He's conscious of that. But maybe right there, maybe maybe that's for a reason. So nightmarish, even as even even as simple as just the dude walking. Yeah, fantastic, man. Uh, it's a, it's a, amnesia number two. We did a video on number one. Hot Moon Press is where you are able to get this stuff, man. Good to go, Jimmy. Yes. K Fabers, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell so that we can notify you when new videos are available. We are on the road to 100,000 subscribers. Thank you very much. And if you get anything out of these videos, if you dig what we produce. Make sure that you follow the channel and uh, it helps us out a lot. The videos are ultimately brought to you by the books that we make, but we have a Patreon and the Patreon is there for you to mitigate the kayfabe effect, become one of our biggest supporters and you get all the videos before anybody else. You also uh, have access to the live stream recording session as we produce these videos. Link in the description below for uh, the, the Patreon. We have more than 1700 videos out there and we might have talked about some of your favorite comics. So make sure you hit the magnifying glass on the front page of the Kayfabe YouTube channel. Check out the channel. Pop in your favorite titles. Check out those episodes. If we haven't talked about your favorite comics, then by all means, put something in the comments so that we can push those books a little bit higher on our uh, to-read piles. Ultimately, the videos are brought to you by the books that we make. Right now, I've been working on Switchblade Shorties, which is my daily comic strip. You could find it on all of our social media platforms, the kayfabe stuff, uh, my own personal uh, social media platforms, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram. There's a dedicated Switchblade Shorties Instagram, and it's also uh, on Webtoon in its uh, full archive. The Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus is uh, is going quick, and uh, it is 45 bucks on Amazon at the moment. Uh, so 
Scoop it up if you haven't. Uh, it's almost freaking half off. So you can't beat that with a stick. Best book I made to date. X-Men Grand Design Trilogy Trade Paperback. Contains all of my X-Men Grand Design works. Uh, it's the one place where you can get it all inside of one handy dandy cover. Red Room Crypto Killers is coming out at the end of February. Part of a trilogy of trade paperbacks. Uh, but you don't need to start with the first one. Because each contains four self-contained stories. So if you grab this first, Crypto Killers, then uh, at a later time you could read the Anti-Social Network or Trigger Warnings. Jimmy, why don't you let the people know what's out there? I have Street Angel, Deadly Squirrel Live, and Street Angel, Princess of Poverty, both available right now from Image Comics. These are also self-contained. Totally, one is black and white, one is full color. Uh, the Homeless Ninja on a Skateboard, perfect for the action comics or superhero comics fan in your life. The big news for me is the self-published comics, True Crime Funnies, the 1986 zine, and the BW zine, celebrating the 80s black and white explosion. These are self-published. You can get them on my website, jimrug.com, or my Patreon, patreon.com slash jimrug. They've been out of print and unavailable. They will be back and available March 6th. So if you miss those, March 6th, you can pick those up. And Hulk Grand Design. This is a treasury-sized edition out of print. However, the trade paperback coming out in May this year, and that is available now for pre-order. So let Marvel know they need to keep these things in print by pre-ordering that one wherever you pre-order books. The books are the most important way to kind of keep things uh, on, on, the, on the tracks. But there are some direct ways to support Cartoonist Kayfabe. Jimmy, let the people know. Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video. You can also pick up Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts, merchandise, hats, stickers, and more at our spread shop. That link is also under this video. There you have it. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, support the channel, keep the vids rocking. Jimmy, give them final marching orders, and we'll be on our way. Read more comics.